Hiya, so um, I've been asked so many times on my blog, my Tumblr, um, to make makeup tutorial videos or like a beauty vlog type thing. Um, I have to say that as much as I've always wanted to, I never really get the chance because of my degree and work taking up the majority of my time. Um, today I wanted to kind of um, break that habit as it's known outside and I didn't have much else to do and um, I wanted to talk about some of my kind of favorite beauty products not so much makeup um, I can do makeup in a separate video but I work at MAC it's all MAC to be honest so um, <laughs> there isn't much variation it'd just be a case of telling you what my favorite um, products are from the brand so um, I wanted to start with um, showing you what I had to go into Boots for last night <laughs> because I'm desperate for some and that is my fake 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 tan and um, as you can see I'm not wearing it now or it'd be a very bad advertisement for it and um, I really really love this fake tan I have to say I've tried every fake tan under the sun because one I'm really bad at fake tanning and I get streaks so it needs to be kind of foolproof for me and just the colours of them, like some of the kind of, not so much now, but the old Saint-Tropez used to be quite yellowy. Now the more greens that turn more olive. But I find that if they're too yellow a base or too pink a base, then it looks really, really false. Whereas um, the fake bake is, it is definitely more of a brown and it feels really natural, even though I can get quite a deep colour. I think with, with paler skin as well, I kind of struggle to get quite a dark fake tan because my skin seems to repel the colour and um, so this one's brilliant I normally do two layers before I go out and it lasts for like a full week because I'm one of those people that I'll fake tan then I'll go back to like this pale colour I don't tend to keep it up I'm not a fake tanaholic I just like a bit of colour sometimes not to look so anemic and um, although sometimes anemic looks okay <laughs> it depends what you've got to do with your day <laughs> when it's uni you don't really care um, I have tried a few other fake bake ones, which is the airbrush and the mousse. Um, mousse is really drying on me, so if you're quite a dry skin like I am, I wouldn't recommend it. The airbrush, as lovely as and convenient as it is, I've got white furniture and it ends up in like a film of fake tan, no matter how many towels you put down and how careful you are with it. And it also has a really kind of horrible smell as it's developing, whereas that one doesn't. So definitely that one, hands down, the Beyond Bronze one. So enough of fake tan, I shall have to tan myself later because I'm looking very, very pale at the moment. Um, I wanted to go on to hair care. So this is something that I started using a few months ago. Um, Lee Stafford Hair Growth. And there's, a, there's also a treatment mask for it as well. So there we go. Um, these are just from Boots. I actually tried them on the recommendation of one of my friends. Um, I never kind of buy into these schemes and ideas where they promise loads and loads of hair growth because I think they're a load of rubbish. Um, I have used uh, protein shampoos, conditioners and things before and as I like to think that they keep my hair from breaking and snapping and growing healthy and everything, but um, I don't really notice the difference. Um, however, with this shampoo, it's like a three-step system first. So you shampoo with that, and then the treatment goes on in between the shampoo and the conditioner. Um, that's left on for five minutes. This one's quite watery, so you have to kind of be careful how much you use or not just to like scoop it up and drop it all over the bathroom. Um, and then you go in with your conditioner. Um, I have actually noticed my hair's been growing really, really well. Like, I get to about this level of my hair and it doesn't grow anymore. Um, probably due to the bleach and the snapping, because I'm not naturally blonde. But, honest to God, it just makes my hair feel shiny. It's it's growing, which is a miracle. Even my hairdresser commented and saying that my hair's growing ridiculously fast. Which, although it's a nightmare to get your roots done when your hair's growing fast, um, it is nice to think that by summer I might actually not have to wear my extensions anymore. Um, I don't tend to wear extensions in the daytime anymore, I've only got them in today because I, I couldn't be bothered to like straighten and style my hair. Um, another thing that I love for my hair, and I've got a lot of hair products, um, my, one of my favourites was Moroccan oil, 
Um, I know a lot of people use it, a lot of celebrities rave about it. I love it to bits, but sometimes you get to that time of the month where you can't afford to buy a £30 bottle of hair oil and cheaper options seem more appealing. So I was in Primark the other day and just at the till point I saw these little kind of vials of argan oil. So I thought 250 why not try it? Um, I have to say it's not as rich and it doesn't feel as quite as luxurious as Moroccan oil or some of the other oils I've tried but it smells kind of like a sweet orange scent and to be honest it is making my hair feel really soft and kind of smooth so especially kind of like split ends and the ends that tend to get a lot drier it's really nice I've been using it on dry hair actually and um, I've not tried it wet yet but it for £2.50 it's just something good to keep in your handbag because um, I know when I'm out and it starts to rain and I get like a big frizz ball going on that I sometimes need something just to just to calm it down and I think it's it's a tiny little size as well so if it's in the handbag brill um, really good buy. I definitely recommend people just to get that even if they've already got Moroccan oil just as like a top up or something that you can chuck in your handbag. Um, next thing we're talking about is a uh, one of my absolute loves, and this is a little bit more pricey, um, this is a body moisturiser. This is the Kiehl's Creme de Corp. Um, I bought this during the Olympics for the first time because there was um, a Kiehl's store in the station in King's Cross. Um, I am really lazy when it comes to moisturiser and if I don't like it or love the moisturiser I'll quickly just not use it after a couple of goes. Um, this stuff is amazing, I've got really flaky dry skin but I don't like to feel greasy or like really the moisturiser be too rich but this is really good for flaky dry scaly skin. Um, I think this little bottle is about £16, £17. Pounds. <laughs> Um, it's not too bad, uh, especially like it lasts me ages. A bottle of this, this is my second bottle. My first bottle must have lasted about three or four months, and I do use it every other day or so. You only need a tiny little bit, and um, I tend to kind of focus it just to the top half of my body because um, my legs haven't been out all winter, so there's no need to um, be doing uh, a moisturiser for them. Ugh, full of cold today. Right, next up. Um, Oh, another quick mention before I move on. Um, this is my Heartbreaker. I don't know if you can see it very well. Heartbreaker Centered Body Lotion. This is from Victoria's Secret. And this is what I tend to wear if I'm going out on a night out because I can layer it with um, the fragrance as well. Heartbreaker. It's really, really feminine. Kind of. It says it's got honeysuckle, but I think it's a little bit sweeter. And it just. It smells really fresh and it's one of those like comfy scents and um, my boyfriend loves it and he bought it so <laughs> I shall wear it every day for him. <laughs> um, moving on, the next thing I wanted to talk about was another skincare thing. Something that um, I've used for years really but um, they redesigned the packaging and I thought it was well worth mentioning because a lot of people ask me like what do you use on your skin but especially because I've got quite bad acne and um, I suffer with it on and off sometimes it's painful and cystic sometimes it's just kind of really uneven and it, it can be a nightmare and anyone who's had acne will know that you can try a million antibiotics and skin lotions and potions and it just clears up when it's ready. It doesn't kind of listen to um, medication. Um, one thing that I found really helpful though while I've been suffering with my skin is using the uh, Pond's Cold Cream Cleanser. So you can use this in multiple ways. I mean, you can use it as a moisturiser if you wanted to. Um, I use it as a cleanser. I literally just put it all over my face and massage it in for a good minute. It's really thick, like kind of emollient and creamy. Um, use my fingers with it, really kind of work into my lashes, into everything because it does get every little bit of makeup off and then you just would tissue it off or wipe it off with a towel or whatever you fancy doing, you can even um, take it off with a facial wipe if you want to really deep clean um, I tend to use like a tissue or cotton pads because it leaves kind of like um, a nice moisturising layer on so you don't, your skin doesn't feel dry or tight after cleansing it just leaves it really soft and I think for £3 whatever it is £3.30 or something from Boots, it, it's well worth it because 
you can't find, really find anything that cheap that does the job so good. Um, while I was in Boots, <laughs> I um, ended up buying, just because, again, the price, I get lured in by kind of thinking, oh, that's cheap, I'll get three of them. So I did. I bought the Pons Hydro Nutritive, I can't even say that, Hydro Nourishing, we'll say it in English instead, <laughs> and the Pons Anti Wrinkle. So I got the I got them both for my kit more than anything, um, just because they were cheap and I go through a lot of moisturiser um, and I heard that they're both good for sensitive skin. Now I've been using the Hydro Nourishing in the daytime because it's quite light and the Nourishing Anti Wrinkle at night because it's a bit more rich and it just feels kind of more luxurious and your skin needs that drink at night. Um, I don't have any wrinkles yet except maybe this, these frown lines um, but I'm sure this will probably keep them at bay for a little bit longer because I'm turning 23 this year and uh, now's the time to start looking after my skin. Right, so skincare done. Next thing I wanted to mention um, so I want to find them now is some brushes, makeup brushes. Now as we all know most of my brushes are MAC because that's where I work, that's the brushes I prefer, I've had them years and they're amazing quality brushes and um, can't knock them at all. Um, but when I was down working Men's Fashion Week there was um, a girl I was sharing a room with called Naomi and she mentioned these Real Techniques brushes which if any of you are familiar with them, um, can't even turn it around, Pixie Woo on uh, YouTube, it's uh, Samantha Chapman that's actually helped design the range of brushes so um, a lot of you will trust her advice and I do too, I love watching Pixie Woo. Um, the brushes themselves are amazing. The, you get a set of four for about 20, 20 to 25 pounds, can't remember, um, which is cheap for brushes, cheap for good quality brushes anyway. Um, these two are my favourites. So one is kind of like a buffing contour um, foundation brush, whatever you want to use it for. I think what's good about these is they are quite multi-purpose. You can use them for your powder, your foundation, cream products, blushes, highlighters, anything really. Um, as you can see it's well used, It's not even I've not even washed it, the tip's normally white. But um, the actual top of this brush, with it being quite flat and dense, I find it really really good for packing on like kind of fuller coverage products or concealers that like you want to kind of buff in kind of this kind of area. Um, I really like the design of the brush because sometimes with me being so used to my MAC brushes I don't like other brushes because they look cheap sometimes but I really do actually like the design of these brushes, very kind of sleek and they're not too big and they're not flimsy, they're well put together and um, well worth the money. I just want to mention this one because it's uh, slightly more kind of domed, it's like a little bit tapered at the top so I, because it's a bit smaller as well and a little bit less dense I find it's really good for kind of more highlighting products or if you've got a blush or something you want to place quite lightly on the skin. Um, again though you could use it for foundation, you could use it even to put your fake tan on your face because with it being synthetic on top you really kind of get all the fake tan onto the skin rather than it being clogging it up the brush. But yeah, you don't even have to wash them between uses, you can just dip them into the next thing and then wash them maybe like once a week or so, which I do in Fairy Liquid, which is so much better than baby shampoo because it disinfects all your brushes and they get super, super clean and go back to white again. Um, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to really talk about. Um, I mean, if, if there's anything anyone wants to see, any kind of like more makeup -y stuff or kind of any particular area that you want me to talk about and um, if it's interesting enough obviously and um, then feel free to like comment and let me know and um, I don't want this video to go on for too long we're nearly at 15 minutes so I'll shut up soon and um, just thought I'd show you before we go my uh, new shoes which I love ta-da um, I got these from ASOS the other day and I've bought quite a lot of them kind of like bodycon and aqua dresses recently and I just think they're classic, they'll go with anything. And I've got this, where is it? Oh gosh, just dropping things. Hang on a second. <laughs> I bought this uh, belt from ASOS as well, which at the moment is too big, but um, I shall get it reduced. So that's my belt. I think I'll go with like everything really. 
and I'm really kind of one for statement and chunky things and gold and big spikes so a lot of my jewellery is kind of more statement -y or that type of thing. So anyway that was my first video, I hope you all enjoyed um, and hopefully we'll get to do another one soon when it's another snowy, rainy, skiving off uni kind of day. <laughs> Alright, thank you, thanks for watching, bye!